unless you've been living under a rock for the last two years, I'm guessing you know a thing or two about this car, the new Nissan Z. But just to recap, under the bonnet, VR30 3 litre V6 twin turbo engine, 298 kilowatts, 475 newton meters. You get a choice of a six speed manual gearbox or a nine speed Mercedes sourced auto. Both are the same price, just a smidge over 73,000. And it comes loaded. There are only two options premium paint or premium paint and the dark roof. And that's about it. But I'm guessing the reason why you're here is you want to know how this car drives on Australian roads. So let's get straight into it. The first thing that you notice when pulling away in the Nissan Z is the ride comfort. There is real compliance in the ride, which uh, is surprising. It's not something that you might expect and it gives the car more of a sort of rangy GT car feel. But it's no bad thing because this car's target market, the biggest market that it'll sell into is the US. And if history tells us anything, it's that the Americans like a, a fairly softly sprung Nissan Z. This one's no baggy thing though, they've backed the dampers off by about 20% compared to its predecessor, the 370Z. And that car was always a little bit nibbly. This one feels more like a 350Z in its chassis balance and I think that's a very good thing actually. Certainly compared to a Supra, it feels far less aggressive. But it's a thing that you could genuinely use every day. It's not as engine dominated as either the Supra and certainly not as a V8 Mustang GT. And I guess in terms of personality, it's sitting somewhere in the middle of the two. There are a few new things with this car. The VR30 DDTT engine up front that was in the Infiniti Q60, most people are fairly familiar with. They've done a few clever things with the exhaust gas recirculation, that the turbos are far more responsive in the car. And thankfully, they've ditched that car's awful steer-by-wire system. This has a more conventional electronic power steering system. And while it's not the richest in terms of on-center feel, at least it, it's faithful and accurate and doesn't do all sorts of strange stuff like that Infiniti Q60 Red Sport did. So that is a major plus. That's the one thing that Nissan absolutely needed to nail with this car, give it respectable steering, and they've done that. The engine, well, it's got a sound symposer behind the dashboard, and I'll just knock it down again. There's lots of gears. It doesn't sound too bad, but it never reaches a particularly operatic note. Nissan doesn't quote a 0 to 100 time for this car, but it looks and feels by the seat of the pants to be low fours. If I was a gambling man, we're gonna strap some V-Box timing gear to this car in due course and find out for ourselves. The nine speed Mercedes sourced auto slurs through the gears quite nicely, but if I was choosing, I'd actually have the six speed manual because they've done a lot of work on the shift action of that and it is an absolute honey of a gear shift. And it carries with it the rev matching that first debuted on the 370Z. It's been refined and it works beautifully. You can still heel and tail it yourself. You can switch it off if you want, but it's a really, really nice installation. We drove the car on some pretty twisty roads yesterday in fairly horrible conditions. And we were able to play around with the handling balance a bit. It's got a traction control system. When you switch a car into sport, it allows a little bit more leeway with the dynamics but the, the initial grab on the stability control can be quite hard. It's not one of those butter smooth things like a BMW M dynamic mode. And even if you switch the stability control fully off, there still remains a vestige under braking to save you if, you if you really spectacularly run out of talent. So that's a Nissan thing. It's on all Nissan models. And I don't think too many people will complain. You can still do a lot with the throttle, even with the stability control fully on. Um, this is not an inert car by any stretch of the imagination. For Australia, the Z is supplied with a 19-inch Bridgestone Potenza S007 tyre. And it's not the last word in sporting focus, but the sidewalls have a bit of compliance to them and help with the ride quality. This is the first Nissan Z to feature launch control, and it's available on both the automatic and the manual models. Works a little bit better on the auto, it has to be said, but it activates really quickly relatively cleanly. It's not going to get you the 
absolute last word in 0 to 100 times, but it will zip you off the line at the lights if you want to get away quicker than anyone else. The steering wheel here, Nissan claim it's exactly the same diameter as the old R32 GTR. And it's just part of an ergonomic package that works really well. It's a simple car to operate. You've got this 12.3 inch screen in front of you, which is fully digital, multi-configurable, and an eight inch screen there, which strangely has no satellite navigation built in at all. It's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay that's a wired system, but it just speaks to a couple of little odd trim selections. Like there's no wireless phone charger, there's no head up display, there's no wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And if you look back at this vehicle, it's a car that's been developed almost piecemeal from carryover adapted parts of the old 370Z, bits of the Infiniti Q60 and some all new bits. So it's a melange of stuff. And I can see that Nissan have developed it quite aggressively to a budget. It's a really, really good car that's come out of that. But uh, if, if you're expecting the latest gear, it's not that car. It's a throwback retro car. It looks great drives very very nicely but if you want all the bells and whistles you might be better off looking at an Audi TT or something like that. So the Nissan Z emerges as a really likeable, endearing and somewhat practical sports coupe. You could genuinely use this car every day. You're only likely to be disappointed by it if you expect the last word in sporting focus and there'll probably be a Nismo model along to scratch that particular itch. We're going to be putting this car up against all of its key rivals here at Wheels. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and keep checking back on the website. Cheers.